Good afternoon. I don't know how exciting this session will be, and I don't know how much you are interested in digital sobriety. I hope you will be more interested after the end of this speech. So first of all, how many of you have heard about GAIAX? Wow, that's big success. How many of you know what GAIAX is? Ah, cool. So that's the reason why I'm here. So my name is Francesco. I'm Italian, so I hope my accent will be good enough. And uh, I'm talking about the future of European digital ecosystems, not GAIAX. So it might sound big words, but that's what, what it is all about. Let's start from the why. So what are we talking about? Everybody keeps talking about data economy. Do, do we really know what data economy is? I try myself to give simple explanation to big questions and big topics like we can talk for hours. So to me, data economy is all about implementing the digitalization of value chains which trans, uh, translates into the creation of common data spaces. And with this sentence, I could go back home because it, there's a lot to <laughs> debate about it. But believe me, this is the way I explain it because this is the way I understand it. So actually, digital economy is not about adopting, adopting any digital technology per se. That's a, a, it's been there for decades, let's be honest. It's not about selling data, mm, not even that. It's about thinking about what are our ecosystems, social, economical, uh, political ecosystems, and how they are now impacted by the digitalization. And if you visualize it, it's pretty simple. All the actors participating in a value chain can, can be a supply chain in the industrial sector, can be a smart city and all the actors participating in the city ecosystem. Now they need to talk each other, they need to interface one another in a digital way. This cannot happen anymore without sharing the data. And you may say, well, that's easy. Not at all. We are still stuck at point zero here. Why? Two reasons. You need to have technology to share the data. We have lots of technology. Are we using them? No. Why? What is the problem? We don't trust them. And we have lots of data. Do we use all of them? No. We're just scratching the surface, or we're using the tip of the iceberg. 80% of the data we have in Europe, this is Eurostat data, just not me saying it, are still under the desk, or on premises, or not utilized. 80% of the applications, 80% of the data are not utilized. So if technology is so important, are we in control of technology, or we are controlled by technology? Actually, we are not in control of technology. There is, a lack of there is a lack of transparency, controllability, and interoperability. And if you want to memorize in one sentence what we at GAIA-RX mean by digital sovereignty, it's this thing. So I ask myself, what do, I, what do we mean by digital sovereignty, given everybody keeps talking about that? Well, Digital sovereignty, and sovereignty in general, is a political concept. It's not a technical concept. Technology cannot be sovereign. You can have a sovereign state if you have your own laws, you apply the laws. But if technology comes around the corner, like you and I were talking about this morning, and work around your rules, are you still in control of your state, of your own, or of your own laws and rules, your economy? No, you lose sovereignty. That's why there is no single state in the world that does not have digital sovereignty in their key strategic agenda. Not just because they want to fight anyone, but because nowadays, without digital sovereignty, you have no sovereignty at all. You have no control of anything. Second, our, are, are our data ecosystems ready for this digital economy? The answer is no. We have fragmented data ecosystems and as well, we have fragmented infrastructure ecosystems. We have fragmented data ecosystems because we have data everywhere, but it's not easy to get the data. It's not easy to get the data inter interoperate each other. And it's not easy to get the data that is hidden under the iceberg. We have fragmented infrastructures. We have lots of you know, technology stacks. 
public, hybrid, private cloud, on-premises infrastructure, doesn't matter, but they are not interoperable, they're not talking to each other. So in order to build this data economy, we need to build digital ecosystems which are by definition federated. Federated across data and federated across infrastructures. But the technology nowadays does not allow to do that. Why? Because of the lack of some common mechanisms. Without these common mechanisms, which are federation, the creation of common data spaces, and the creation of trusted platforms, this is the, pro the projection of what is going to happen in the uh, few next years. These numbers are not invented. So the market share of the European cloud service providers, and I don't believe UK is any different than that, is below 10% now. The largest European cloud service provider now has got less than 3% of the market share. The largest non-European uh, cloud service provider has got 70% of the market share. I'm uh, not going to make names, you know, all of them. 8 to 10% of the GDP of Europe is going to be directly dependent on digital. What I mean is that the revenues of all the data-related or digital or technology or IT-related business is going to count for up to, 10 to 10, uh, 8 to 10% of the GDP in 2025, not in 10 years. But the most important thing is that this is the tip of the iceberg because there is no economy there is no car that is not transforming itself into a data platform. When you think about electric cars, this is what we're talking about. It's no more a transportation means. It's a data platform. There is no product, no service that is not going to be completely revolutionized by digital, which means 70 to 80 percent, I say 50 percent, but many economists say worse, is going to be directly or indirectly dependent on digital technologies. Now, if you put that all together, it means 70 to 80% of our economies, society, public services, private uh, sectors will be dependent on technology platforms, which nowadays are largely dominated by less of a handful of players. Last but not least, uh, we have no sovereignty without digital sovereignty, which means there is no political meaning of being sovereign in a state if actually you have no control on that state. Let's be honest. Now, the recipe is kind of simple. We are small in Europe and UK. There's no single actor that, uh, actor that can play alone. The only way is to federate. It's an old recipe. Cooperation, federation. Now is the time to make it happen because the, this is the only way to create the critical mass and the scalability that the economy needs. But uh, there is another phenomenon. Data is spread all over. And therefore, the hyper-concentrated technologies are not working anymore. Maybe some of you have seen what is, gonna, what, what is happening in the last few years. The large technology providers, the hyperscalers, are struggling to try to demonstrate they can be localized, decentralized, and distributed. Maybe this is less visible to the let me say public, but I can tell you it's very visible to the governments. Why? Because they realize that data now is everywhere. I was joking with my friend here, talking about if I should invent nowadays the cloud, I would not name it cloud, I would name it roots. Because basically, you need something that is not up in the air, but is very well connected on the ground and connected all the trees in the forest. Every tree generating data, every tree being you know, capable to elaborate those data. And therefore, we need a new generation of distributed, hyper-distributed cloud, not hyper-concentrated cloud. And therefore, we need common data spaces to feed this new model of totally decentralized, totally um, distributed technology and algorithms and data. Last but not least, we need trusted platform. And this is where the problem comes. If you don't trust technology, you're not going to use it. So what GAIAX is trying to do in simple terms is try to regain controllability of technology. Moving from a model where we let somebody else control a technology and basically using a concentrate proprietary and opaque model into a new model that is open. Why? Because if you have to interoperate across data spread all over the world, you must be open to be interoperable. Distributed, by definition you have to be distributed. And transparent. Why? Because I want to give you back control such that you can take away decisions of what technology you want to use. We're not judging good or bad technologies, not at all. But we want to create an identity card for services that nowadays is missing. So if the most important thing is ruling my life, which is technology, I would like to have something describing what I'm using. And possibly I would like to be able to choose 
what I'm using, and possibly I would, like to, I would like to have an alternative and not just pick on one, two, three players every time. In a nutshell, we are trying to connect this, this joint world. So the data ecosystems and the infrastructure uh, the ecosystems, and we uh, define the recipe of this you know, uh, connected world is based on three main ingredients. Data exchange, because you need to exchange data, of course, to build a federated uh, federation and uh, digital value chains. Uh, federation, because you need to trust each other to build a federation. Identity management, and of course, you need to trust who you're sharing the data or you are uh, or exposed or you're getting the data from. And compliance in the end, because you want to make sure that those data are managed by technologies that you trust because they uh, comply with a set of rules that you have agreed upon. So, we at Gaia X are doing these two things. On one side, we are creating, we are enabling the creation of common data spaces. How we do that? Through projects run by our members. We have almost 400 members working in different sectors, and they are federating to create common data spaces across the automotive, the agriculture, the industrial, the transportation, the tourism data spaces. That means dozens or, or hundreds of players of those value chains have decided to get together, to share the data each other. They're not giving out for free. Of course, they have a win-win sharing the data. And they use GAIAX to make sure that nobody steals the data of, it, of anyone else. But they are building a win-win value for each other. On the other side, we are building the bricks to build a common uh, federated infrastructure. Why? Because you need common federated infrastructure to, generate this, to create this new generation of federated uh, cloud, which is hyperscalable horizontally and not just vertically. If you look at that, this is exactly in line with European data strategy, which is summarized on the top there. European data strategy is based on two pillars. On one side, building a common market for data, which again is based on free data flow across Europe and creating this common uh, sharing of data to enable the digitaliz digitalization of value chain. Why that? To strengthen the industry of data uh, in Europe, of course. And on the other side, create the so-called computing continuum. Why? Because you can have the 5, the 6, the 7G, it doesn't matter. If you don't converge from central cloud to the edge, it will never be possible to exploit the power of data and artificial intelligence and, uh, and, and compute without having, again, this new generation of distributed computing. So these above are the pillars of the European data strategy, very common to any other countries, even outside of Europe. And below is the GAIA-X mission, which was born even before, to be honest. It's totally private. We are not funded, not subsidized by any public institution. And it's totally in line with what European strategy wants to achieve. Concretely, this is what we do. We're not talking about, we're just not talking about it. We have working groups defining the specification. This was part of a 2021 effort. In 2022, we started defining the framework of GAIAX, which is based on these three pillars. And nowadays, we have a complete picture of the framework, which is made of three pillars and three layers. In the three layers, you see functional specification, technical specification, and open source code. And in this way, we are building a framework that will enable the creation of those common infrastructures and common data spaces. In a nutshell, this is what we have done in, uh, well, it's not my year one. Actually, the association was kind of born in 2021 when I was onboarded, but it started as a governmental initiative in 2019. And uh, yeah, I know, I will be fast. Um, but it's important to understand it was born by Merkel, Macron, okay? Peter Altemeyer and Bruno Le Maire, Ministers of Finance. But then it turned out in a few months to be an open uh, in, in international non-for-profit association. Why? Because everybody wanted to be part of it. But it's more difficult because now we need to have everybody on board it and convinced. Uh, so we were very successful, I think, bringing the association uh, to create something during 2021, developing this framework I'm talking about in 2022 and develop the first projects. And in 2023, we are going to move into operationalization. So in these months, in the next months, we are going to deploy in the market the, fir the first instances of the GAIAX clearinghouses. The clearinghouse is basically the point of verification of the GAIAX uh, compliance, which means in a few months, we're going to have thousands of GAIAX compliance services showing up in marketplaces where people can use them, put the, the GAIAX compliance into their procurement rules, and 
you know, dozens of, serv of service providers providing AX compliant services, real alternative to the existing market roadblocks. This is what the GAIAX Clearinghouse is about. Basically, it's a one-stop place you go when you want to uh, answer the question, what, how do I become GAIAX compliant? How do I show up in a catalog? How do I create my own catalog GAIAX? How do I join a federation? How can, can I create a federation? We are operationalize this concept as we speak in the next week, which is pretty exciting. This was my five years plan I talked about. Year one was the setup, year two the adoption, year, t year three the growth. And we have some key uh, targets here. GAIAX Digital Clearinghouse Deployment, ongoing. Common catalog creation, we started uh, in uh, November with 200 services ready to be published. Now we are at 2,500, so I'm expecting thousands of services to be populating this catalog once we switch on the clearinghouses. So we switch on, let me say, the certification uh, mechanisms in the market. And the target for Q3 uh, for Q4 is to have the largest adoption. So we want to make sure GAIAX is included in the procurement rules of any uh, users. Of course, we want just to make sure uh, Europe regain a little bit of control on technology, and that's the plan of the five years. Here are some examples of real projects. Like I said, we have projects in the automotive, in the smart cities, in the mobility, in the tourism, uh, in the supply chain, manufacturing, etc. Real stuff. These projects are run and funded by real companies in the market that decided they need to do that to be competitive. They do not get any horizon funding, they do not get any money. They do it because they know they need it, and they do it thanks to GAIAX. So that's the best way to demonstrate we're doing something useful. Lots of people, working groups, 360 members, actually this is old, we're growing, and I hope we're going to have soon UK as well. So in a nutshell, that's why I'm talking about GAIAX as a European Union for Data Economy, because we put together the governmental uh, regulation, the society, the economy needs, the infrastructures, the data spaces, all the actors, users and providers of technology in a pretty unique endeavor. Not easy, but uh, pretty uh, exciting and funny. And uh, I think one last thing I wanted to show you before this presentation, I asked ChatGPT, what about GAIAX? It was quite impressive. Uh, and uh, it gave me some very good uh, answers, like, what is GAIAX? Said, very good answer. Then, why is it important? And I think he was giving me very good answers, like, uh, you know, it's not just something governmental, nothing at all. Pretty good, pretty smart. So, I asked then a question, like, uh, is there any similar initiative? And then he started telling me, yes, US is writing the data act. I said, hmm, that's not exactly the case. But I understand where you're heading to. So you see GAIAX as a kind of new regulation? No. And uh, actually, uh, he or she apologized, say, sorry, I was confusing myself. <laughs> it was kind of interesting. Then I asked something interesting, because you know that the data behind ChatGPT are stated to be frozen at 2021. No way. Because this GX, G, DCH, I, I wrote it on purpose, the GAIAX Digital Clearinghouse, is a brand new concept. I started talking about late November, and it, the first rule published on the website was December. So I asked the question, what is the GX DCH? Well, I said, yeah, it's a DIG GAIAX Data Collaboration Hub, which is totally wrong, but it was quite a credible story. So I said, no. <laughs> No, that's wrong. GX DCH stands for GAIAX Digital Clearinghouse, a one-stop place to go and get the GAIAX certification of your service if you want. And they say, I apologize for the confusion, and the description is totally perfect. Actually, it's much better than what I use when I describe it. <laughs> so that's to say that, well, you can ask ChatGPT, and they are they or he or she. This is the last question I asked about. <laughs> And Fionn, this is for you. Uh, what about UK? Uh, is UK going to create a GAIAX hub? Well, to my knowledge, not yet. But yes, of course, the initiative is open. And you might understand, I hope, by the end of my speech, this is not for Europe. It's born in Europe for Europe and beyond. And of course, we consider UK still part of Europe, I mean, myself at least. But what we're building is kind of let's get stronger in front of a future which is going to be totally ruled by someone else that we have no control of if we want to protect our economy, our industry, our employment, our society, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. With that said, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.